one of the things we talked about with command line interfaces like PowerShell is that they do not have a high degree of discoverability. Now, something like a GUI or graphical user interface does have a high degree of discoverability. And what we mean by that is there are things you can look at, you can click on, you can right click on, you can see options, you can see, you know, a ribbon or a menu. And then go through and click on them and see what it does. So just by looking at the window, there's a lot of things you can see. If you'll notice here in PowerShell, you look at it, there's not much you can see. There's not a high degree of discoverability, which makes a, for a steeper learning curve when you're using a command line interface, but it does also provide more security because with a command line interface, if you leave it open, somebody comes and sits down, they've got to know the command line interface in order to be able to do anything. If you leave a GUI to your system open, then somebody can poke around and figure things out on the GUI, even if they don't know the system very well. So in a sense, it's a little more secure. But when it comes to learning it, the part we focus on is a challenge this creates. Now, there are a couple of tools that will help us, a couple of commandlets that will help us learn PowerShell. And one of the first ones we need to know is get command. So get dash command. Remember, all PowerShell commandlets have a verb noun construct. And admittedly, Microsoft plays fast and loose with the definition of verb, but we're going to go with it anyway because that's what they use. So get command helps us get a list of commands. So if I do get command and hit enter, it will show me all of the commands available on my system. And it'll show it to me whether they're a function or an alias or a commandlet or whatever. And you can see I have a whole bunch of them on my system. Now, that becomes a little bit of a challenge. So we want to figure out how we can find things a little bit better. So one of the things we can do is we can use get command and we can give it a name or we can use a wildcard. So I can do get command and let's say I want to manage services on my system. So I can do asterisk service asterisk. And that's going to give me every command that has to do with or has the uh, service anywhere in the name. And now you can see we've been able to filter this down a little bit more. Now there are a couple of other things we can do here. And that's with that noun verb construct. Let me try that again. Verb noun. I can do use a verb or a noun parameter or argument in my get command commandlet. So I can do get command and I want to find everything with a noun service. And that's going to filter down even more. Now I just have things related to services. And that becomes really helpful. I can do the same thing with verb. So I can do get command. And I want to look at everything with the verb get. There's going to be a lot of these, by the way. Get is standard for any time you want to get information. So I can find everything related to get. Now the other thing I want you to see here, let me do this again. I'm going to pipe this to more which will give it to me a page at a time. And here you'll see we have a command type, a name, a version, and a source. The source is going to be the module. So let's say I want to look for anything related to storage because I'm trying to figure out something related to, you know, my storage system. So I can do, let me clear the screen here, get command dash module storage, and it will show me any of my commandlets in my storage module. Now I can put these together and let's say I want to see anything related to the verb get. So I can do get command module storage verb get and that will show me all of my get commands related to the storage module. So you can see how we're using the get command to help find some of these commandlets. So this helps us discover the commandlets that are available to us. And then we can follow these up. So right here, you'll see we have get disk. All right, what else can I do with disk? So I'm going to put this together. Get command from the module storage. And I want to look this time at the noun disk because I want to see what all things I can do with my disks. And here we go. Clear disk, get disk, initialize disk, set disk, update disk. So remember, we can search by command name and we can use asterisks to as wildcards to help us find things if we don't know what the command is. We can search by module, by noun, or by verb.
Now, there's a few other things we can do too, with it too. Now, how do I know that? If, you, if I didn't know that, how would I discover that? Well, I use get command to find commands. You can also use the next command, let get help, to find commands as well. I prefer using get command rather than get help. It's mostly a personal preference. So I use get command to find commands. I will use get help to figure out how to use commands. Now, before you do this, if you've never opened a PowerShell before and you run get help, it actually won't give you a whole lot. What we need to do is update our help first. So what's happening behind the scenes here is the help files are actually stored online, and Microsoft update, updates them fairly frequently. So what happens when we do update help is it goes out and grabs, hey, there, I finally started doing it. Look at it go. It grabs all of those help content files and downloads them to your computer so then you can use get help and get more complete information than you could without updating it so it actually creates an interesting issue if you're in an air gapped system and what we mean by that is a system that's not connected to the uh, internet if you're on a system that's isolated like that then update help isn't available because it has to go download it so just something to keep in mind. Now, almost every time you run update help, you're going to have this come up. Fail to update help files for the following modules. And it'll give you some modules that it could not update. Don't worry about it. It updated the rest of them. If you're not using something from one of those modules, you're fine. It doesn't matter. They will become available sometimes a little bit later on. So now that I've got my help updated, I can learn how to use a command. So for example, I want to I used a dash module, dash noun, and dash verb with my get command. So I'm gonna do get help on get command. So you can see where I actually found that. And I'm gonna pipe that to more because there's a lot here. So we have the name, a synopsis, a more detailed description. And then the syntax, and this gives you all of the things you can do. So get command, I can search for a name, and I can put a system string there. I can do, which is basically just text. I can choose a command type, and here in my curly brackets, I can do any of these options. I can do a list imported, which will give me everything that's imported commands. I can specify the module and give it a name. I can specify down here we'll see the noun and the verb right there almost overlooked it so here you can see all of the different things that you can do with it and this actually is really really helpful enter by the way will advance you one line at a time spacebar will advance you one uh, page at a time now there's a couple of other things here with get help so this is my favorite get help dash examples you can also do get help dash detailed which will give you details on every one of these arguments or you can do full which will give you both of these together and then online says you know what I don't want to update help but I want you to go out online and find the information for me so my favorite of these is the examples so this is what this looks like I'm gonna do get help for get command and I want to look at examples. And I'm going to go ahead and pipe this to more again to give it to me one page at a time. And so here you'll see the name, the synopsis, and here are your examples. So example one, get command lists, functions, and aliases. This is what you run. Get commands in the current session. Run this command. Get command lists and display them in order. Run this command. Get commands for command lists for a module. Run this command. And you'll see here we can go through examples and find, and the examples get more and more complex as we go. But we can look at all of those examples of how we can use this particular command. Now, this works for anything, and using this, I can start trying to explore my system. So let's say, let's say I want to find something to do with printing, right? and I don't. I want to manage my printing from here in PowerShell, but I don't know how to do it. I've never done it before, so I can do get command and since I don't know what I'm looking for I want to search for anything within that has print in the name 
So I'm going to do git command asterisk print asterisk, and that's going to give me a whole bunch of them. Oh, and here we can see I have print driver, or print driver, add print driver, add printer, just got those backwards, add printer port, add print configuration. Here are all of these, and you see they're in the print management module. So let me see what else I can find from my print management module. So I'm going to get command module print management. And that's going to show me all of my commands there. Now I want to filter this out and look at just my get commands because I want to see what's available. So I'm just going to hit my up arrow rather than retyping that and say I want to do dash verb get. And here I have get printer configuration, get printer, get print driver, get printer port, get printer property. I want to look at my printers. So I could just type get printer and see what happens. But just for the fun of it, I'm going to do get help on get printer and see if this will do what I think it should do. So it tells me it retrieves a list of printers installed on computer and here are my options. I can get a specific uh, printer. Uh, I can look at a specific computer name. So I can do this on a remote computer. And so I'm going to do get printer and sure enough that's going to give me what I wanted. Formatted a little weird, but that's okay. And here are all of my printers. Now in there, I'm going to scroll back up through my previous commands. I saw this one on printer property. I want to know what that means. So I'm going to get help on get printer property. And that tells me it retrieves printer properties for the specified printer. And get printer property means I have to give it a printer name. Then I can look at a property and... And this one, if I do get printer property, it's actually going to fail on me because it needs a printer name. So I'm going to control C out of that. I'm going to get printer and I'm going to look at my printer names. So let me see if I can get the printer properties for this printer right here. Let's see if it works. Get printer property backslash backslash yvc print backslash 24 dash 207 dash laser jet m602 and it says it can't find it well let me see if i can type this correctly there we go type it correctly and it finds a printer amazing how that works so computer name the printer name and here are the properties related to that printer Okay, so now I've used get command to discover commands. I've used update help to update my help files. Get help to figure out how to use the commands I discovered using get command. There's one more that I want to show you, and this is the show command, commandlet. So just something to be aware of is show command only works if you have a system that has a GUI installed. So if you're running a server that has no desktop experience involved, show command won't work because it does require the GUI. So the way it works, if I run show command, it's going to pull up a list of all of my commands. And if you're familiar with the ISE, this should look pretty similar. Now I've got a bunch of stuff on here. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to filter this we were playing with printers. Let's keep playing with printers. So I'm going to find my print management module. Almost there, print management. Okay, so that's going to give me my print management, and you can see this is now filtered down to just things from that printer or from that module. I can also search in here, by the way. So I want to figure out how to add a printer. So I'm going to click on Add Printer, and this is going to show me all of my printer properties. Now, I'm not actually going to add one, but I do want to show you how this works. And you'll see I have three different parameter sets. Now, if you remember when we ran Git Command, we saw those two blocks of parameters. Each one of those was a parameter set. And this will show me each one of those parameter sets, and it will show me what's different. So this one has AP, this one has connection, this one has port, which means this one isn't going to have any port that I can use. So I'm going to do by connection. I'm going to put in a connection name, backslash, backslash, YVC print, backslash, spell that correctly. I'm just going to make up, you know, office printer. 
And then I can set as job, I can specify a session, I can confirm whatever. So I can set all of my options here. And then if I click run, what happens is it adds my printer down or add, adds my command down here. And so now I can just hit enter to execute that command. So that show command will help us learn syntax and options available for all of our commands, kind of the same way uh, get help does, but it actually guides us through it step by step. Remember though, it only works if you have a uh, if you have a GUI installed on the system. Okay, so just to recap real quick. Even though PowerShell is not a GUI and does not have a high degree of discoverability, it does give us some tools to help us learn how to use it. And honestly, if you learn these tools, especially Git Command and Git Help, you can find a lot of stuff in PowerShell. There's another command that we're going to add a little bit later on that's specific to objects, but we'll deal with that in another video. So if you can master Git Command and Git Help, you can pretty much figure out how to do anything in PowerShell that you need to do. So they're great, great tools for you to learn. Make sure you understand them really well. So use Git Command to find commands. Update Help makes our help current. You should probably do that every few weeks. Get help helps us learn how to use commands and then show command is another command that will help us learn how to use the commands we discovered with get command.